In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the issues surrounding the P320's design, which are currently being debated about its capability to fire uncommanded while still in its holster. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're using a 6-hour P320. This is an X5 model, and as you can see from the production date on the box, this firearm was made on May 14th, 2020. So this has all of the voluntary upgrade updates, as well as all of the inline updates that were introduced in the, manu in the factory after the voluntary updates, all the way up to its production date. The voluntary updates were to address a drop safe issue, which has nothing to do with what I'm about to demonstrate. So. This firearm, if you take a look at the P320s, uh, with the exception of the military models, there are no manual thumb safeties, and there's no inertia safety on the trigger. The only safety inside this gun is internal. And to show that, we're gonna take the gun apart. This is the safety right here. This lever, when pressure is applied, will rotate up and allow the striker to reach and detonate around. And this is spring-loaded, but the, the spring that's in here is a hairspring with a single coil. So it doesn't have an awful lot of tension, especially at the lower end of its range. The safety, when it's out of the gun, looks like this. This is your pivot point. This is the bottom edge that you see projecting out of the bottom of the slide. This is its range of movement, and this is the engagement surface that blocks the firing pin. This entire device is 0.9 millimeters thick. It's basically a metal stamping with a bend in it. What we found is that it only needs to travel in this direction by 1.09 millimeters 1.08, 1.09 is what our uh, digital calipers registered in order for this to move, the engagement surface to move out of the way far enough for the striker to be able to hit the round. So that's not a lot of movement and it's certainly not the full range. It's only about that much right there. And that's it. That safety is off. Now in the frame, in order to show that part, we got to rotate the takedown lever back to that position, to the closed position, and we have to reset the trigger like that. Okay. Now, this part right here, this is the part that engages with the safety lever in the slide and causes it to deactivate. It moves in conjunction with the sear and it will not move correctly while the uh, disconnector is in the upward position. This, you know, if, if this gets pressed down, it disconnects and the gun won't fire. This only moves down if the slide is out of battery. The engagement surface for the sear, as you can see from right back here, is not an awful lot. It's about one-third of a millimeter. So when I apply pressure to the trigger, You'll see that the captive safety moves up and down. Now again, we measured this with digital calipers, and we found that before the sear drops, this moves up 1.14 millimeters. That's enough to disengage the safety in the slide. A little bit more pressure and the sear drops down and releases the striker. Now what does that mean when this is all assembled? Well let's put this back together. When the trigger moves that much. The safeties are off in this gun. So if there's any powder fouling in here that is interacting with the safety, um, if your holster has become deformed, 
or if you're using a custom-made holster that wasn't made properly, when you insert your gun into the holster, the holster could press against the trigger like that. And now this thing is sitting in your holster hot and ready to fire. Three more pounds of pressure from the top or any outside movement squeezing the holster can move the trigger far enough to discharge a round. This is a serious design flaw. Uh, if, if your holster is not perfect, then you're at risk of this trigger moving and discharging around on you. Now we've seen a lot of things in the uh, other YouTubers that have gone out there and uh, listed all of the different incidents of these firearms going off uncommanded. Most of them are police officers and they're in circumstances where they're running around, they're chasing people, they're tackling people, even sometimes as simple as just rotating and getting out of their car, they've had unintended and uncommanded discharges of these firearms. Some officers have been injured. There's a documented case of a uh, Virginia policewoman who teaches at their academy, and all she was doing was taking her gun off of her belt and it put a round through her leg. Here in Wesley Chapel, we had a school resource officer who, rightly so, was fired because he was fiddling with his firearm in a lunchroom full of kids in elementary school. But all he was doing was raising and lowering his gun in the holster, and when he pressed down, it fired around through the wall. Now, thankfully, no one was hurt, but it did happen, and relatively close by. So there is an issue with this design. And I'm not sure how SIG is going to fix this, because the only real fix would be to put an inertia safety on the trigger here, or sell all of their guns with the manual thumb safety, which does block the trigger's movement and prevent it from moving. Now, full disclosure, I like SIG firearms. I own six of them. This is just an issue with a particular model that they're making, and I'm not going to fault them too hard on this. This was their first attempt at making a striker-fired pistol. They basically uh, took the SIG P250 frame and modified it into a striker-fired uh, gun to compete for a military contract, and you can see evidence of that just looking at the back here. There's still a cutout here from where the hammer would go. They just filled it in. So it was a rush job, and they got their military contract, but I don't think they've really addressed all the issues with this design. Now the P365, which is their second striker fired gun that they've, that they've manufactured, does not suffer from this problem. We've taken a good look at that one, and while it also does not have an inertia safety on the, on the slide. It requires a good deal amount of additional pressure to move that trigger, and it has a much longer take up. So the likelihood that you're going to discharge a round uncommanded with the P365 from holster wear or, or any other kind of interaction is kind of low. Um, so I mean, I mean, I suppose it's still possible with the P365 because it works mostly the same way as this, just with more pressure required on the trigger. So we'll have to see what Sig Sauer does um, and how they respond to all of these lawsuits against them for injuries and, and defect claims against this model firearm. Outside of that, it's a great gun and I don't have any other complaints about it. Now, SIG is also not the only company that makes boo-boos. I mean, I'm about ready to do another video about Ruger and one of their guns that has a severe safety problem and hasn't been addressed for years. So, this isn't isolated to SIG and I'm not playing any favorites here. I just wanna make sure that's clear. If anybody has any ideas about how this can be fixed outside of putting an inertia safety on or going with uh, a manual thumb safety on each of these firearms, hey, let SIG know. Maybe they'll take you up on their information, but I highly doubt it. So that's what we found when we started taking these things apart and figuring out why they were firing uncommanded. Thanks for watching.